Okay, so we're going to talk through a little bit of a coding example of this um, and show a little bit of code. Might drive some of this home. Um, so, say you have a new functionality you want to add to this to do app. You want to make it so you can upload files related to your to do um, and download them, but um, mostly it's important just to be able to like have them pushed up to the cloud at some point, um, upload them on there, um, kind of like a Dropbox experience, but tied to your to-do item. Um, so what questions would you ask? What considerations might you make? So here are some of these. So if you're given this, let's start with you. We're given this question. So you're like, okay, this is all you're given. You just know, okay, I want to be able to upload and download items. Um, what what types of things might you might you want to ask your you know PM or manager, whoever's giving you the spec about this? Um, or what what do you need? What more information do you need to be able to make a decision about how to design this? I may ask that uploads need to be immediate or can it be delayed? Would be one question I'd ask. Yeah, great question. Um, and you ask me that and I say, uh, it's okay if it's delayed, it doesn't have to be super immediate. The goal is just to be able to be like, okay, I'm working on this to-do and I have a file that I wanna make sure like is synced to this to-do at some point. Okay. Cool. Any other Size limits. Size limits, yeah, great. Size limits great. and duplicates. Yeah, duplicates. So what to do if you're sending, if you upload the same file, yeah. say in that and, case, um, it'll be Okay. Um, we can put restrictions uh, like on editables, right? Like uh, who can edit? Yeah. Is it like read only file or write yeah. files? Something like that. And types of uh, files. I mean, it's all. Uh, yeah. It's For not sure. like uh, Android related though, but yeah, still back and stuff. But, but yeah, it would be still good questions to ask, I guess. Yeah, for sure. Okay, I'm going to take these down. Oh, God. What is this? Font. Sorry about that. I'm new to this this tool, someone re recommended it. I'm like, man, it is. I don't know what this font is, but all right, we're gonna try it. Um. Okay, so immediate or delayed? Okay. Delayed style types. Size limit. Editability. Um, did I miss any that you mentioned? Uh, maybe one more thing we can ask is like if should the user be uh, or should the app be in the foreground all the time for the upload to happen or should the upload continue even after the user has background on the app? Yeah. Great questions. Duplicates. Duplicates, thank you. Okay, so you ask all these questions. PM's like, okay, cool. Um, we're going to say delay is okay. We basically want it to be, oops, I'm just gonna write this down here. Um, we want it to, Continue even if the user leads the app. Um, we want to say, okay, actually, you know, if they start to upload it, then they go do something else. We don't want it to wait. We want it to be uploaded for when they come back. Um, it's going to be read only. Oops. So, like, once you upload it, you can't do anything besides download it. Um, have like a reasonable size limit. Um, I don't know, we're, we're, we're starting small, so we're gonna do like, um, I don't know. I don't know what that seems reasonable. Sure, we'll do that. Um, 
we're going to do file types. It can be PDF or CSV. And we're just going to start with those. Um, who can access only the people um, the people on the to-do list. So if it's a collaborative one, it could be some two people, but um, mostly it's just going to be like me if it's my to-do list. Um, okay. I think that is all of those. Okay. So I threw out some here um, that all of yours were, were great examples. Um, let's hear some more you might think about, like, do you want the user to be able to like cancel or pause the upload once it started? Um, why might that matter um, in our case? Or what might that impact? Uh, maybe we can... Go ahead. Uh, suppose if we are in Wi-Fi and if it's uploading and uh, if we go to mobile data, it'll consume a lot of mobile data, right? So we can pause it and then uh, re-upload later on when we connect to Wi-Fi. Yes. It's, yes, definitely great use case or you're like, oh, my battery's about to die. I don't want to deal with this right now. Let me like pause this or something. Yeah. But I want to be able to pause it. Um, what would that change about your implementation? I mean, we can set those constraints in um, job scheduler, uh, upload only when uh, certain yeah. battery percentage is uh, more, more than certain battery percent, and then if you are connected only to Wi-Fi, something like that. Yeah, yes, exactly. So you see at the bottom, we have, do you need Wi-Fi to be able to download or upload? Say you say, okay, actually, um, we're going to add it to our restraints that um, Wi-Fi required, or maybe the user can set this. In settings um, and battery greater than 20%. Um, what about, so yeah, someone said type of files to talk about that. What about multiple files? We want to be able to do that. Just, if you think about like if I'm in my email and I'm trying to add a bunch of attachments, it sometimes will have like the progress bar and multiple things trying to upload. Um, that's you. So what that might impact how we, how we think about these, like scheduling these and using these. Right. Um, so in our case, we're starting simple too. So we say, actually, you know, you can just upload one file at a time. These are like not really meant to be a super commonly used feature. So once you are uploading file, it's got to like do, it's going to like kick off the upload and then you can't be like, okay, here's like five files. Go ahead and do this. Those are some constraints. So given these requirements, we have, it's okay if it's delayed. Um, we want it to continue even if the user leaves the app. Um, it's read only. So you upload, you download, you can't do anything else with the file at that point. Um, you have some sort of size limit and, and file limit or file type limits. Um, and you, you can only access if you're part of that to-do list, if you have access to that to-do list. Um, Wi-Fi is required, or you can set a setting to say whether or not you want Wi-Fi to be required. Um, you have battery restraint, and you want it to just be like, you can only choose one file at a time when you click up. What classes, so take like two minutes to think about what you might use for this, how you might think about setting some of these things and structuring your code, what this might look like. Okay, so this is an app that my uh, coworker from the week three content had written up for this kind of Dropbox example of you want to upload and, and download a file. So you have this main activity. Um, I'll show you what it looks like real quick. So you have 
these two buttons. In this case, you got upload, which shows you this select photo. Um, we're just focusing on sort of the worker part, so that's not fully working. But you can see now they have this download in progress here. Notification. Um, okay, so um, what this ends up looking like. So you have this upload fragment. That's the thing that we were just looking at. Um, so hopefully you all thought about this for a second and given the constraints we had, um, maybe landed on work manager. Um, did anyone or did anyone who landed on work manager want to explain why or what how they ended up there, um, or if you came up with something different, what you came up with. Yeah, I thought of work manager because I think once you said delayed, then that was kind of the, the indication to use work manager. That was my immediate kind of thought. Totally. Because it, was, it wasn't it immediate, so that was, that was kind of a giveaway, I thought, for using work manager. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. So the two main things with work manager are the guaranteed work and deferred is okay. And in this case, those are both things that we want. So work manager is a good option. Um, did anyone come up with something else? Not necessarily wrong, just there's different ways to do this. No. Okay, great. Um, so you can see basically you have a work manager, the way in code that you're going to get a work manager is work manager .get instance. Um, you can see the docs here for it. Um, but basically it retrieves the default work manager. This is Android code. This is not code I wrote um, or that my coworker wrote. So it essentially has this instance of a work manager that lets you kind of do all the, the work running that you want. Um, in my case, a structure, we structured it so there's a transfer manager that's managing upload and download that takes in a work manager. Um, that way it can be abstracted out a little bit with like where the, the UI part and the fragment and the work part elsewhere. So in this case, you have this view, you got an upload button and a download button upload the photo, download the photo, and... Uh, so just a question, Ali. So what does the transfer manager do, actually? So what, what does it do? Oh, yeah, so this is a class that we wrote. So we're going to talk through this in a second. Um, but basically, the idea is it's sort of the, the part... It's a class where the work manager is used to actually execute the work. Um, the reason I even... It, the reason it's created is just to abstract away, like... This is the stuff that's happening. That's okay. managing. Yeah. Okay. So it takes a. Uh, okay. So it, it takes a work takes manager in. Work manager object. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So it's and essentially then, a wrapper around the work manager that that can handle all the work manager stuff. Just putting it, pulling it outside of the upload fragment because it makes it more testable and easier to kind of isolate. Like, okay, here's the UI piece, and here's the um, sure. actual yeah. work piece. Yeah. That makes, makes sense. sense. Yeah. Okay. Cool, so here, yeah, so on create, we're just kind of creating this. And then we have this upload and download calls. Um, in this case, the upload actually like creates this photo picker. Um, it download, we'll just call um, transfer manager directly. Um, in this case, this is, uh, this is a code that my coworker wrote. There's other ways to do this, but basically you, um, if you up, if you click the photo you want, the key things here are there's oops, two calls, one to transfer manager upload and one to transfer manager download file. So we're focusing here on the work manager part. We're gonna focus on this class specifically. Um, zoom in so it's a little easier to see. So the idea here is that you are able to set these work request builder. So this is like the thing that I was showing um, in the example in the slide. 
to upload, run and upload and download. So this is kind of the, the again, kind of the um, work manager Android code. This isn't the code that we, this like one-time work request builder is a thing that you will use to say, okay, what I want to run this thing one time when the user clicks this button. Um, the reason there's this one time versus there's an option to do like a repeated work manager for something like a sync. Um, but in this case, we're doing a one time request. Um, so in this case, there you can set constraints like the network type. So in this case, it's requiring charging. This is unmetered. You can see there's network types. Um, so unmetered meaning like not like data that you're using. Um, like using Wi-Fi in this case we wanted and charging. So these are the where you'd set any constraints you have. Let me see if we can look at what's in this constraints class. So um, requires charging. It requires the battery's not low, so we mentioned maybe you want that. Um, there's a couple options you can use here. This is just some constraints for the, that this is all part of the kind of work manager API. So you set that and then you set your data. So in this case, say we have whatever file we were using to upload. And for this example code, it was going to our gallery. So it's kind of this image URI. Um, and we are enqueuing it in the work manager. So you'll see that this is a one-time work request builder with our upload worker. So let's dive into that class. So this is the class that's actually doing the work for us. Um, so this is the request builder set where you can set constraints and input data and you enqueue that request. But the actual details of the work are in this class that you are franchising on. Okay. so. Upload worker, what does this do? Um, in this case, uh, because this is an example code, my, what my worker wrote, it doesn't do the like network request itself, but if you were doing a network call, it would happen here. The idea is, um, in this case, they actually set it as a foreground task. Let's look at this. So this specifies a work request that is long running. Um, and it should be kept alive while the work is executing. This is sort of the, this is sort of so like it wants to be updating the user when it's done. This is something that you have this foreground info that basically is that notification that I mentioned in foreground services, you have to use a notification. So even if you're using work manager, even if it's okay for it to be, um, delayed, you can still have that foreground aspect that basically says, we're gonna let the user know that this thing is uploading. Um, that's sort of a choice I think you can decide, but like a lot of times you want that user um, kind of knowledge so that they're like, oh, I clicked this thing, it says it's uploading, like I, it's not, I'm not seeing it online yet. Like, is it actually uploading? I don't know. So you can have this sort of um, use this as a, an option to set, set it as foreground task, set this foreground info, it'll show um, uh, should go back to that code. So, there you go. Um, it creates that notification. So this notification is the part that says, okay, upload in progress. It's uploading the file. And then the thing that actually does the upload would happen here. In this case, it's just sleeping. So not very exciting um, code here, but basically you have these logs that just showing, okay, it's uploading. And then when it's done, it would return success. So this is, class isn't really doing that much in reality, but the idea is you would have this worker class that you write, it extends class worker. Let's look at the codes for base class worker. So this is the class that actually does the work and it's used as part of work manager. Your, the thing you're implementing is this do work method and it happens on Background thread, which a little funny enough happens on an executor, executor 
managing those threads and things for you. Um, but work manager is doing this as sort of this, this background test. We're throwing this out and saying, okay, do this thing. If we want it, if we want the user to know what's happening, we use that foreground um, notification. But otherwise we're basically saying, okay, run this work at some point. Um, work is given a minute, maximum of 10 minutes to finish its execution. If it's a listenable worker, it has that callback, that success callback. So you can see, starts the work, gets the ex executor, calls execute with a runnable, same way we would be doing with our executor service, executor service. Um, does the work, sets the result. This is kind of the code underneath it. Don't necessarily need to know exactly what's happening here, but it's kind of useful to know, okay, it's kind of running on this similar mechanisms for queuing this work up um, like we did for kind of queuing our threads up. Okay, going back to the code here. Download file, basically the same thing. We want it only when the network is connected in this case, and this is when it um, has internet and or has network and let's see we got our data here we want to be downloading we're queuing it let's look at this download worker so we're showing a notification again just to show that it's downloading i think um saw that i was showing you here this guy download in progress But basically, that's what we're setting here. You can see it says download the box. Um, and again, we're setting that as a foreground task. We would do our calls here and then show success. So this is just kind of to demonstrate what it looks like to set up and use a work manager. You're enqueuing these requests, it's handling for you these constraints. Anything that you're setting here, it's handling, you know, the resources available, job scheduler under the hood here. And it's letting you say, okay, I want to run these services, but I'm not going to keep track of anything myself. I'm just going to use this work manager to queue it. One question, Ali, what does, what does unmetered mean? What does that mean? So I think unmetered, I think they, I can double check this, but my understanding of unmetered is that it's like, you know how when you're using data, it has it's like um, you have a certain allowance available, whereas like yeah. Wi-Fi, you have you don't have that. It's not like metered in that you're being. Right. It's like uh, you don't have like a limit on it. I think that's what it's doing. Because then you also have if you see in here like the non not roaming. Um, but why don't we yeah. check it? Network type. Um, I love when the definition of it is just like it's unmetered. I'm like, that's helpful. Thank you. Um, okay, so if you I just care about yeah, oh, go ahead. Yeah, so it looks like if you just care about network connection, you choose connected, um, mm. and then. But if you're worried about cost like data, you want to use unmetered. So yeah, when that's not going to cost them to. Oh, okay. So basically, okay, so you only want to, you only want to upload when, okay, it's not going to cost them anything. So when you're on Wi-Fi, basically. Is that what, yeah, I think it must just be Wi-Fi okay. or maybe there's like some way to know that it's, like, you know how some apps, I think Twitter has this with some things where it's like, it like won't charge you I forget. I feel like there's some cases where it's like it doesn't use your data to use certain apps okay. or something. But basically, also, yeah, it's kind of yeah. un under the hood way to know like that it's you're not charging the user an inordinate amount because you probably don't want like big things like uploads, background tests, those types of things. You want to be somewhat careful with them because if you're mm -hmm. doing them, they're using not only bandwidth like data 
um, resources from the user, like bandwidth of the phone, all those types of things. Um, you mostly just want to be like, okay, I don't want to just be constantly sending stuff up on the user's data because then they're going to delete my app because they. <laughs> it's